Now in the hand, there's several joints that I'd like you to be aware of as you're looking at the hand. First of all, we're going to start at the very tips out here. Recall that each of these little digits here, these small bones here, are phalange. Now the joints between them are interphalangeal joints. Now these interphalangeal joints are just like the elbow, they're hinge joints. They will move only in one direction, so your fingers can flex like this. My fingers cannot move side to side. The structure of the bones prevents that side to side movement. But look closely at this metacarpal phalangeal joint right here. Notice how the surface of the two bones, both the metacarpal and the phalange, are somewhat rounded. That's going to allow movement in two planes. So your fingers of your metacarpal phalangeal joint right here, you can flex like this. But because of the rounded shape, your fingers can also do this. One plane, two planes. This is a little closer view of this metacarpal phalangeal joint. Notice how the ends of the bones are more, both rounded. So you can get that movement in both directions. A special interest to humans are the bones here of the thumb. Okay, the first metacarpal and the trapezius. A, a trape trapeze trapezium, excuse me. This bone of your wrist, and I'm not going to expect you to know the names of the bones of the wrist. This is just one of the, as far as I'm concerned, just understand this is a carpal bone that connects the carpals to the you know, first, first metacarpal. Notice the shape at the end of this one and the shape at the end of this one. This is called a saddle joint. If you carefully observe the uh, hand that's you know, not bound together time where the bones are more disarticulated, look at the shape of the metacarpal it roughly looks like a saddle right there. Like you might expect a G.I. Joe figurine to sit right in there. But also, in the carpal bone, turn it here like this, and you can see the saddle again. So the two saddles sit side by side. So now you're going to get movement this direction because it's rounded this way. Charles is going to get movement this way. This allows for opposition, so you can move your thumb in opposition. The opposable thumb is unique among humans and other primates. Because of that saddle joint located right down here, we are able to move our thumb across the palm and touch all the other fingers. That's what we mean by opposable thumb. It moves in what we call opposition, oppositional movement. This is essential for grasping, you know, grasping and holding on. So if you're going to use a tool, and the definition of man is tool user, if you're going to use a tool, you're going to grasp it. And the opposable thumb is going to do it. Otherwise, you're just grabbing like this. And the grip is nowhere near as secure 